Well, I'm going to try to answer the question, what is European bioethics? Uh, since I think that's at least part of the questions that the Gluby project, or Gläube, uh, <laughs> if you want to do it in German, um, must answer. And to me, European bioethics is any work in bioethics that either deals with problems that are shared in Europe or has an approach that emphasizes or analyzes values that are endorsed by European societies. So to me, European bioethics is not bioethics done by Europeans or bioethics done in Europe. It could be done anywhere by anyone. Now what do I mean by problems that are shared in Europe? Well, one cluster of these problems are the specific problems of justice, state, and professional responsibilities that occur in healthcare systems that we can characterize as public healthcare systems. They are public because they are comprehensive, reasonably well-funded, and funded either through taxation or some form of compulsory, non-risk-rated, that is, in insurance terms, solidarity-based insurance. Now, resource allocation in such systems raise other problems than the problems raised in non-public systems based on risk-rated insurance, for instance, in relation to the gatekeeper role of the physician. These problems are further complicated because all European countries allow for the existence of private healthcare alongside the public system. So to me, an analysis of such issues would be European bioethics. Another cluster of problems shared in Europe <coughs> relate to the fact that all European countries share the same human rights framework elaborated by the Council of Europe. And this does, for instance, have implications for an analysis of privacy or freedom of speech in the healthcare settings. It is important here to make it absolutely clear that I do not claim that these clusters of problems are unique to Europe, that they appear only in Europe and nowhere else. My claim is just that they're shared in a specific form and that they require an analysis taking account of the specificity of the problems and not just, for instance, an abstract analysis of justice and healthcare. <coughs> this analysis can be carried out by Europeans, Americans, Asians, Africans, or whatever. It would still count as European bioethics, according to my definition. Now, the second type of specifically European <coughs> bioethics is bioethics that explores European values. This, of course, immediately raises the problems of saying something about what European values might mean. And I don't think that there are any values that are unique to Europe or to any European country in the sense that they occur nowhere else or cannot be properly understood by outsiders. I don't think that European values should primarily be understood as opposed to some other set of values. And I don't think that we are in any way bound to the values of our forefathers and that I, for instance, as a Dane, should seek to excavate the values inherent in the Norse sagas and try to live by them. It would be great fun writing about the ethics of the blood axe in Njal's saga, but it would only be of literary and historical interest and would not be relevant to contemporary bioethics. <coughs> but are there then any European values at all, or any that are worth exploring? Well, I do think that there are some values that are more prominent in Europe more prominent in European discourse than in the discourse in other regions of the world, and that these are values that are more generally accepted by Europeans than by people in other regions. Let us briefly explore two possible candidates. One example that has been explored by Matty Haley and by myself uh, in slightly different ways is the value of solidarity. Solidarity is not a uniquely European <laughs> concept. An American would have some idea what I meant if I used the word, but it is nevertheless a concept and value that has much greater resonance and importance in Europe. Now, the three most important things to note about solidarity is, first of all, that it's a group concept. Secondly, that it is not coextensive with justice. And thirdly, that it is historical. Let us briefly explore these characteristics of solidarity. Solidarity is an attitude towards members of a group I identify with because they are members of this group 
and because we are mutually committed to the group. <coughs> Other attitudes may be appropriate to people outside the group, but they would not be solidarity. Solidarity is not coextensive with either formal or standard accounts of distrib distributive justice. In sharing the common resources of the group, solidarity will enjoin us to share them in an ethically acceptable way, but that may encompass both a preference for giving to the needy and at the same time a preference for rewarding contributions. Now the specifics of an allocation under solidarity will depend on what kind of group we are talking about and what the group's coherence making project is. And this brings us to the historical element of solidarity. Solidarity occurs in groups that have a past, a present and a future and where the members are to some degree identifying with a common history and a common imagined future. A classical example of solidarity is solidarity within a labor union. The unions came out of a struggle for workers' rights. They only succeeded because the members stood shoulder to shoulder and they were held together by what at that time at least was a common vision of the good life for the working man. Another example of European bioethics work is work on the concept of dignity. Now, as many will know, there is a small cottage industry of dignity bashing in bioethics, claiming that the concept is incomprehensible, contentless, <coughs> fully reducible to respect for persons, or in some other way totally useless and redundant. Now, let me first make the modest observation that if dignity is such an empty and useless concept, it is rather surprising that serious philosophers have spent years working on it, and perhaps even more surprising that our whole human rights order is built on the idea of the equal dignity of all human beings. If the deflationary account of dignity is right, this could only be explained as a result of comprehensive community-wide cognitive error. Now, dignity clearly is a complicated concept with a number of distinct meanings and interpretations, and there are several ways in which dignity can be infringed. Given the importance of dignity in European discourse, and given that the deflationary account has gained no traction among decision makers, analytical work on the concept of dignity and its application in various contexts will continue to be necessary. With these few examples, I hope that I've convinced you that European bioethics does exist and that it is a fruitful area of activity.